I don't know if it's a precursor of things to come, but my first play of the college basketball season on opening night gets canceled at halftime because the floor is too slippery. Yeah, that's what happened to me last night. Gonzaga against Pittsburgh being played in Okinawa, Japan. Portable floor, too slippery. I don't know if you happen to see any of that game on TV, but I mean in the first half. I don't know what took them to halftime to decide to call that team. I mean, you're putting your players out there in jeopardy, risking their health just to put on a game. But then again, you have to wonder, the schools go to the expense of sending the clubs overseas. Yes, there are fringe benefits. They get the tour Japan. It's a cultural event as well. But my goodness, with all the money out there and all at risk, you're playing on a portable floor, which you haven't realized that this has happened in the past where there has been condensation building up, causing falls by players. And you saw that last night. Strange, strange, strange situation. Uh, anyway, here on the free picks, of course, I naturally cashed in with my first college freebie of the season as I gave you Drexel as a nine and a half point dog and they covered in a one point loss to St. Joseph's. Also hit with the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA and uh, lost with USC. But hey, two out of three last night, 134-103 roll with the complimentary plays over the past four months. And for today, I've got three complimentary plays for you coming up. Uh, nighttime game, I'm going to head out to the Pac-12 and take a look at the contest between Slumping California and Oregon State. And then a couple of games that go at 3.30 Eastern time, Arkansas State, UL Monroe, Southern Mississippi, and Rice, because I know all of you out there are just dying to have those latest Sun Belt and Conference USA winners. This being Saturday, of course, you know the drill each and every Saturday over the past four plus years. I've given you a money-saving discount coupon code that could potentially save you hundreds of dollars off your total purchase price, and this is where I talk really fast. And that coupon code today is going to be 22 percent. That's 22-P-E-R-C-E-N-T. No space between the number or the word. That'll save you 22 percent off your total purchase price. It's a mix and match coupon, which means it's good for any combination of handicappers, picks, and or packages. But it's a one-time single-use coupon, which means you've got to put everything in your shopping cart at one time to maximize your savings. If you happen to already be involved in a long-term package with a particular handicapper and you want to extend that package, taking advantage of the 22 percent discount. And if you have any instant rebates, they would be applicable as well. Should you have a have questions, you can always contact customer service. That's what they are there for. A couple of other big plays quickly here. Steve Boonin's Cali Cartel, 4-0 sweep in football last weekend. His number one football crew last year. His number one college football crew the past two years with 50 dime winner number 32 out of 44. They're calling it their revenge route of the year. It goes on the nighttime card. And you can see all the previous winners where they made you money last week, all at discounted prices. 31, 12, and 1 roll with 50 dime releases overall. And this play matches their Super Bowl winner on the Patriots as well. Of course, last Saturday, they cashed in with their total of the year, which was uh, TCU and Oklahoma State going over and then came back with the Eagles uh, for their Sunday NFL play. Uh, also going today, um, let's see. Oh, geez, Anthony Red did it again. Past two nights, last night, easy. Colorado and USC under. Virginia Tech outright on Thursday night. They were both 40 dime plays. Uh, today, something twice as strong. His 80 dime winner, number 12 out of 16, and his fifth straight in college's Pac 12 game of the year, Oregon and Stanford. But more importantly, it's college football winner, number 17 out of 22. And he's going for winning day number 31 out of 47, including 10 out of 13. And you save $60 by using coupon code RED. R-E-D-D, -D, his last name. Matt Rivers has an early bankroll builder, a blank check game of the year release, only the 16th in his 13 years as a handicapper here at the site. It's on Ohio State and Illinois. It kicks off at noon Eastern time, his last blank check winner. TCU hammering West Virginia by 30 a couple of Thursdays ago. You save $75 by using the coupon code Blank, B-L-A-N-K. All the other promos, et cetera, over on the homepage. Let's get to the complimentary plays. I'll do these in reverse chronological order for you. I think it's about time California wins a game to become bowl eligible. A season has started with such promise has come down and uh, really hit the Golden Bears hard. But then again, yes, they have lost four straight games, but look at who they have played. I mean, they lose at home to uh, USC. They lose on the road to Utah, UCLA, and Oregon. Other than Stanford, they played the top four teams there in the Pac-12. 
Well, today they stepped down in competition big time, taking on Oregon State, the Beavers. Uh, six straight losses after that 41-0 home loss to UCLA last week. One and five against the spread in that stretch. California won last year, 45-21, as a four-point road dog. Uh, the Beavers are going to be starting redshirt freshman Nick Mitchell for the third straight game. Uh, four turnovers in the loss to UCLA last week. He's only completing 47% of his passes with one touchdown pass and four uh, interceptions so far. Um, again, you're one game away from becoming bowl eligible. You're taking on an Oregon State team that allowed a season-high 674 yards to UCLA last week. You got an Oregon State secondary that has injuries to their starting safety and their starting cornerback, who are both out. And you got Jared Goff, who everybody thought was going to be, you know, a surefire NFL first-round pick next, uh, next season and probably the number one quarterback taken in the draft, who has been surpassed quickly by Paxton Lynch this season of Memphis. So you got to go with California here. you got to lay the 21 and a half points. You know the Golden Bears are going to be able to put points on the board, and you also know they're going to be relentless in putting them on the board as they try to break out of this four-game funk, and who better to do it against than Oregon State. I'm also going to go with Southern Mississippi. Coming off a bye, I've been riding Golden Eagles so much this season, but why not? 7-2 and two against the spread this year. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, last game, they beat UTEP at home 34-13 two Saturdays ago. They've won three in a row since that loss at Marshall, 31-10 uh, back in uh, the middle of October. Meanwhile, Rice is coming off a 24-21 loss to UTEP as a 5.5-point uh, favorite last Friday night. Their last home game, they lost 42-17 to to the Louisiana, uh, Louisiana Tech. The home game prior to that, they lost to Western Kentucky 49-10. to I point those two games out because Louisiana Tech and Western Kentucky, just like Southern Mississippi, have diversified offensive attacks. They can beat you through the air. They can beat you on the ground. And that's exactly what's going to happen today. I think the Golden Eagles are severely underpriced. I came this close to making them my best bet here today. Uh, again, they have covered seven of nine this season. They're in revenge. In fact, double revenge because last year, Rice beat them up 41-23. Two years ago, they won 44-17. to uh, They got Nick Mullins at quarterback. They have a very good ground attack, and they're taking on a Rice team that can't stop the run. A Rice team that's giving up 441 yards a game. You have the Southern Miss number one rushing attack in Conference USA, number two passing attack in Conference USA, behind a veteran good Pretty big-sized offensive line. I think they're cheap. I think they win it by double digits. Your other complimentary play, I'm going to go with a red-hot Arkansas State squad, which really has the Sun Belt in its control now by virtue of its uh, big road upset in its last game two Thursdays ago uh, against Appalachian State. Uh, they're taking on UL Monroe on the road. The Warhawks are off a three-game road trip that was capped with a seventh consecutive loss when they were hammered last week, 51-14 to at Troy. They also lost 59-14 to App State on October 17th in their last home game. Also lost this season 51-31 to at home to Georgia Southern. Now, App State and Georgia Southern are two teams that primarily run the ball, okay? you got an Arkansas State team that not only can run the ball, but they can throw the ball as well. They're going to be able to stretch the field vertically and horizontally as UL Monroe's head coach, Todd Berry, even said in one of his press conferences this week, um, this is going to be a big problem for the UL Monroe defense. Again, you've got a uh, Arkansas State team that has won and covered five straight meetings in this series. They have won five straight since their quarterback, Freddie Knighton, returned from an injury, which cost him three games and contributed mightily to Arkansas State's one and three start this season. But again, five straight wins. Knighton last year, 355 yards and four touchdowns in last year's home win. Again, Arkansas State controls their fate in the Sun Belt. UL Monroe, uh, they've only covered three of their last 12 games at home. They've gone 0-3 as a home dog in that stretch. This is an injury-riddled team taking on an Arkansas State team that is number 14 in the country in terms of its run game, averaging 233 yards a game. They're taking on a ULM defense that gives up 229.9 yards per game on the ground. I think this is a blowout. I think that 14 and a half points, it is fairly priced. I think Arkansas State will not overlook them. I think they'll have a slow start, 
But as you've seen throughout the season with the Red Wolves, they just pull away in the second half, and I think the same thing goes here, and I think they win this game somewhere between 17 and 20 points. So Arkansas State and Southern Mississippi, a couple of road chalks plus California. That's going to be your other complimentary play. FYI, I take a look at that uh, Baylor-Oklahoma uh, game tonight. Uh, you know, I know the Sooners are in revenge. I know they've won four straight since that loss uh, to Texas, scoring 52 points plus in each one of those games. But then again, they took on Iowa State, Texas Tech, Kansas, and Kansas State. Not exactly murderer's row. It gets a lot tougher here when you go into Waco tonight, where the Bears have just been invincible here of late. And, of course, Baylor 8-0 at home against top 25 teams since 2011, including two wins against Oklahoma. You know, I look at that game, and I just wanted to pass this on to you. When I look at the Oklahoma season, I see two things that hurt Oklahoma. They're two toughest foes, obviously against Texas, where the Longhorns just ran the ball down their throat. FYI, Baylor can run the ball. Shock Linwood, who, by the way, that is just one of my favorite names in college football. Hey, who's a running back? Shock Linwood's coming out. Uh, Shock Linwood, a third in the nation. In yards per carry this season at 7.8 yards a carry, 12th in the nation in terms of yards per game, 131 yards a game. So effective because when your defense is constantly playing on its heels because you got a high-powered passing attack, it opens up holes for the ground game. Oklahoma wasn't able to stop Texas's ground game, okay? Yes, you have a high-powered passing attack with Baylor, as I said. Texas Tech threw the ball relentlessly against Oklahoma and gave them fits. So the Sooners are not invincible defensively. And I'll tell you what, guys, this is not an official free play, but I looked at this game and I can see multiple reasons for going one way or another. But I haven't seen Bob Stoops deliver in a big game in quite a long time. I see the game being in Waco. I see Baylor with that offense, and I see Baylor sitting there on the outside of the college football playoff rankings, I think number six right now. And you know how they got screwed last year. They haven't played anybody of note this season. They got to win this game. They have to win this game. And if they win this game, the Big 12 is theirs because TCU lost last week. They got to win it. I think they can. And you see how the line has come down to like two and a half now from three. I even saw some twos out there. I think Baylor is to play. Again, I had handicapped the game. But the reason I didn't use it as a best bet, the reason I didn't use it as a free play, I got to tell you, I'm an unabashed um Baylor fan. <laughs> you know how many times I take the Baylor Bears, and I thought, this is just going to be a game. It's the featured ESPN game this week. It's going to be a game I'm going to watch on TV. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to bet on it, but I handicapped the game. I thought about it a lot. I at least wanted to pass on my thoughts to you about it. Good luck, everybody, and I'll catch you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.